Hey, what's up everybody? Jason here with All Terrain Coffee and Camping. And today we're gonna test out a new uh, coffee maker. Coffee gadget device, whatever you wanna call it. So I picked up, and it's kind of dark background there, but the Soto Helix Coffee Maker. Now I've only taken this out of the package to wash it. Um, I, I've not, I've only briefly looked at the instructions for it. I've not even tried expanding this out yet. Um, so the, the purpose of why I do these is so you can kind of see what you might run into the first time you use it. And, and someone had pointed out in another video I had that, you know, for that particular thing, the vendor had a video out on how to use it that addressed some of the, the issues. And it's good that they do that. But what I'm trying to do is when they provide instructions on the package, you know, whether it's a single use thing or whether it's something like this that's reusable, I'm wanting to go buy the instructions they give first before I go watch any other videos from them or anyone else. Um, I'm wanting to try what they provide when you purchase this device. Okay, so as you see, it's collapsed and they've got it, it's locked in place, so it's just not going to come back down. So let's see how to undo it. Sorry, I'm just going to bring this up in my face and read it so you won't see me. It says, release of the three points from the base ring by gently sliding towards the center of the Helix coffee maker until disengaged and the cone pops up. Okay, so and they do have a little illustration there. So let's see, push the three. All right, so it looks like, okay. So as I'm doing this, it pops. Uh, I see what happens now. So what you want to do is each ring kind of will catch it. So you just want to pop it past that. Okay, so that was simple enough. Now, I thought this was really cool. This is really lightweight. Um, it's collapsible, but it's going to be easy to clean. That's my what I'm thinking with this. This is why I was really interested in this. It's not like some of the pour overs that you get that are collapsible that are solid that could be harder to clean while you're out on the trail all right something else i liked about this is they state that it comes with filters or you can use your own so these use number two coffee filters now starting out i'm just going to use what they provided um, i've not seen at least in store anywhere where you can buy these easily for their brand so I imagine what I'll end up doing is using store-bought ones instead of trying to order them. All right, this is just a basic number two coffee filter. Now, my reading instructions are going to probably kind of stop here. I'm still going to look at what they've got, but now it should be just like any pour-over, right? I'm just going to put paper cone in. If I run into a challenge, I will... See what they say. Well, look, minor little challenge. Let's see if they recommend anchoring that any particular way. Yeah, once we get the grounds in, it should stabilize it. They basically just state, you know, gently place this in here and put your grounds in. If you see steam, that's, um, I've got the water, uh, I've got my jet bowl sitting over here and it's on a very low right now because it is cold outside. It's in the low to mid thirties. So I've already gotten it to a bowl and I'm just trying to keep it at a good temp. All right. So what I've got here for the coffee, I'm using a brand name that I'm very familiar with, one that I use at home quite a bit. It's called Joe Van Gogh, and this is their espresso roast, espresso blend. And I'm using it because it's one I am very familiar with. I know I like it. I know what it tastes like when I use it in my AeroPress, right? So I know what to expect. And, uh, and I always recommend that when you're trying something for the first time, if you've got a coffee that you know that you like, you know what flavor you're looking for, try using that starting out. Try, don't, don't go get all new stuff all at once. Unless it is a, a single use case where the coffee's included. All right. So I've got two scoops at a 
I believe this is around like a, a medium coarse grind is what they recommend for a lot of your pour overs. So let's start here. I'm just going to gently. And when you're doing a pour over, you want to try to cover all the beans. You want to kind of do it in a circular motion. Sometimes it can be a little bit more difficult when you're not using a kettle, especially like a gooseneck kettle that makes it real easy to, to get that finer stream. I found with the jet bowl with the lid on it works pretty well for me. All right, so as it goes down, you're just going to put a little bit more in there. You want to take your time with a, a pour over. Um, you don't want to just dump all your water in at one time. You want to dump it in, let that settle down. It also gives it time. You've probably heard me mention this before for the coffee to bloom. Um, if you ever notice when you're making coffee, you add water, it'll it'll kind of foam up, bubble up a little bit, and that's called blooming. You'll see that a lot with your fresher coffees as well. Um, if your coffee doesn't bloom, it's not necessarily the the end of the world. It doesn't. It's not a bad thing in my opinion, because um, I've had some that will and some that won't. I've had some that I know are pretty fresh and very fresh ground. I just ground this this morning before I hit it out. I'm gonna do this last one here. I'm gonna try to get more along the edges. You wanna be careful not to do what I just did and miss the, the filter a little bit. It wasn't very much. I'm not worried about it affecting the, the coffee flavoring that much at all. And now we're going to let it sit for a little bit. Um, we do have, there's still some water in there with the grounds. So we're going to let that drip. And I'm using my, my Backpacker Infinity Mug by GSI. Um, I like using this, especially for, for doing videos like this with new makers, devices, gadgets, because you can actually see what's happening. Um, it's not 100% uh, transparent, clear. It is a smoked tint to it, but, um, but you can actually see what's happening. And that's why you'll see me use this particular mug quite a bit. And I really like it too for the trail. It's it's lightweight. Um, it's not going to keep your coffee hot for a long, long time. However, I'm the kind of person that I like my coffee very hot. And um, usually I'll drink it right away. I might sip a little bit, depending on what I've got going on. Um, typically the coffee's not going to just sit around. I, I'm not going to brew a cup of coffee, put it in a, you know, a double wall insulated mug and sip on it for the next four or five hours. Right. So to me, it's not a huge deal for something to be able to, to stay cold for a, a mug or container to go that cold, excuse me, to keep it hot for a long amount of time. Um, the only reason I can see myself switching to something is if I'm getting in even more extreme colds than what I am now. Uh, I can see myself using, you know, more of a, a double wall stainless mug for those cases, just so it's going to stay hot for the time I'm trying to drink it. Um, I'm also pretty infamous about not always using the lid when I'm drinking my coffees. Um, if I'm using the lid, a lot of times I'm, I'm probably getting ready to, to start moving. So I'll, I'll sip as I go and I don't want to spill my coffee. Okay, so there's still a little bit of drip in there, but not much. So I'm going to call this done. And I'm going to set this over to the side back over here. You know, before I do that, let's see how easy it is. So look at that. I just picked it right up. There, there was no stability issues. I was doing that just to see would it be a problem picking this up out of there, and, and it wasn't.
and luckily where I'm at here at this park, the picnic area, there's a trash can right over there. So I was able to go in and dispose of that. Put this to the side. Now I'm going to give this a sip and see what it's like. Okay, so that, that makes a really, really good cup of coffee. Um, to me, this is, so let me talk about it just a minute. So things that I really like about this is how lightweight it is and the fact that it's not, you know, it's not solid here. I see this as something easier to clean off, right? Um, you can just literally wipe it off while you're out on the trail. You can just pour a bit of water from your container out to kind of rinse it off. Um, let's see what it's like to actually compact it again. So I think it was only three rings that it was that was holding it. All right, so that's one. That's two of the sides. I mean, this is very straightforward, very easy to use. I've not had any issues with it. I really didn't have to read that much about this. Um, I'm not an expert when it comes to doing pour over coffees. I normally use the AeroPress. Um, I can see, especially for a backpacking trip, this would be perfect for backpacking. Um, it takes up very little space. It does come with this very, very lightweight mesh bag that you can put it in. Um, if you wanted to, this bag will actually also fit your filters. I'm not going to put the filters in there right now just because it might still be a little wet. So, I mean, in this bag, you can have your filters and your little pour-over coffee maker all in one place. Right? Keep it with in your food bag or wherever you got your coffee. Have it all together. I, I'm impressed. Um, I think I spent, this was about $15. I got it from REI.com. Um, and, and again, this is the Soto Helix Coffee Maker. So I, I highly recommend checking it out. Uh, you're looking, if, especially if you like pour over coffees or if you want something that's going to be fast when you're out and about, but you don't want to deal with instant coffees, right? Or you don't want to deal with your, your single use pour over coffees that, you know, those things, they cost like, between two and three dollars a pop on an average and some of the really good instant coffees they still run about two dollars per cup right so this will allow you to use whatever coffee you want uh, coffee filters that you buy in the store I mean these are cheap I think I picked up a pack of number two um, it's not these but a pack of number two filters that cost me I don't know a couple of dollars from Target and it was like 75 or 100 or 150 in there so coffee filters are really cheap so, I mean, the, the particular coffee that I use right here, the Joe Van Gogh Espresso Blend, it's like $15 for a bag. Um, I'm using two scoops of it. There, it's this, I don't know what the exact cost is, but it's a lot cheaper than your single use. So, if you're looking for something, I highly recommend checking, recommend checking this out. Um, I am going to do a little bit of hiking with this. So, let's go and put my lid back on it. Go in and put it in my sleeve there and <laughs> going to grab me a couple of hilltop packs coffee company chocolate espresso chocolate covered espresso beans yeah I, i'm sorry you're gonna have to work with me i just I, I love these things so much you're probably going to see these featured in a lot of my videos so i put three on my lid and um yeah that's not going to cut it that's not enough there now now i'm ready for the trail hope you'll have an awesome day bye